and welcome to what is arguably one of the grandest and most spectacular entrances to any church here in England. We are stood in the porch of Siren Sester Parish Church for today's virtual church. You know that if you're greeted with an entrance like this, you're in for a real treat in the church itself. Let's go in and have a look at the church. In here, there is a four manual Harrison and Harrison organ, um, rebuilt in 2009, um, having previously been built by Henry Willis. Most of the organ is actually over in that case there, but some of it is over here as well. The organ console is over on the north side of the church, and over on the south side here is the main case. So behind here we have the choir division, the solo division, and the swell, and the pipes which you've just seen over there are the great division. The pedal stops are also behind there as well. Organ is played from this wonderful console here, this four manual Harrison and Harrison console, a very similar um, console to the organ we'll be having on Beauty in Sound. So the first hymn today is Lobe den Herren, praise to the Lord the Almighty. And this has been requested by Sam Sleeth. What a fabulous instrument. It's really nice to be playing uh, an English organ 
again of this sort of size. It's, it re really reminds me of my time at York and Winchester having all of these wonderful English diapasons and uh, English re uh, reeds and mixtures. It's a really comfortable console as well. The Axion is actually quite light. Um, it's unusual. It's um, it, actually lighter than most uh, Harrison consoles. Uh, it will be lighter than my console as well. Um, so it takes a little bit of getting used to, but the keys are really beautifully made indeed. Sam Sleeth requested that. Uh, praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation, which is of course Lobit and Haddon. Uh, we had four verses of that, and you heard the in verse two the orchestral trumpet and the tuba. A very, very uh, piercing, particularly while sat right here, as they are right behind me. We're going to go on to number uh, 352 in the NEH. Um, so thank you very much, Sam, for requesting that. We're now going to have a request from Alan, and it is, Crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon his throne, um, to the tune of Dynameter. And I thought um, I will start this hymn with a bit of a fanfare. So let's have the orchestral uh, trumpet by itself on the solo um, and then see how it um, contrasts to the rest of the organ um, after the fanfare. So crown him with many crowns for, uh, for Alan.
very, very exciting. Now, we are a little bit limited uh, today because the choir division is essentially out of action, unfortunately. Basically, if I pull on any stop, the mixture wants to join the party. So, pull on the open diapason, you get the mixture as well. So, I can't have anything quieter than the um, principal chorus with the mixture. Unfortunately, it's stuck on, so I can't, be, I can't demonstrate the beautiful stops on here. And there are uh, some um, mutations and a nice clarinet, which would have been nice to have used. Ah, well, we have to make do the hazards of playing the organ. We're going to go to um, number 486 now. We have a gospel to proclaim. This is a request from Martin, who is in the Netherlands. So thank you very much indeed, Martin. So what should we use for this one? Let's, let, let's not have this one so loud so soon. So let's just explore the, and let's explore the great reed, the great trumpet as a solo stop, and accompanied by um, the uh, swell up to two foot. And we'll have a little bit of solo as well with that, just to give it a little bit more weight. And obviously some pedal as well. So, Martin, uh, Martin's request, we have a gospel to proclaim.
wonderful line in verse uh, 4. Tell of that glorious Easter morn. Empty the tomb, for he was free. He broke the power of death and hell, that we might share his victory. Really, really wonderful Easter tide um, verse. And the previous verse, tell of his death at Calvary, hated by those he came to save. Good hymn, that's good hymn indeed. Really wonderful indeed. Thank you very much, Martin, for requesting it. Let's just pop into common praise now, number 249, for um, above the moon, earth rises, a sunlit mossy stone, a garden that God prizes, where life has richly grown. Just before we do that, let's explore some of these stops on the swell, shall we? So we have a, little, a wonderful division here, a very varied and a colourful division, but very typically English. So no mutations. We have the flutes, the strings, the diapasons, mixtures, and then the reeds. So let's start at the bottom down here. Let's start with the strings. Let's go into the, the um, eight and four for flutes. A diapason eight and four. So a 16 foot, which um, a flute, Borden, which will go with the flutes. It's additional as well uh, with the strings. Uh, it goes up to two foot, so 15th, uh, eight, four, and two. And then we have uh, two mixtures. Uh, 17, 19, and 22, 22, 26, and 29. You organist geeks will know what that means. Basically, basically these are three rank mixtures. Uh, so, the, so the one starting at 17, and the one starting at 22. And both together with a 16. Beautiful chorus there and the swell. Going up to the reeds, we have an orbois. Uh, which you would have heard last night in the Gilmore. Uh, and then the 16, 8, and 4 reeds. A lot of Willis in this organ and a lot of Harrison. I'm not sure which ones uh, are which. Maybe a bit of homework for you guys could be to go and have a look at which pipes belong to which organ builder. I gather from Hugo Kennard, the director of music here, that Harrison has threw out a lot of the organ uh, which was not Willis. So Willis built this organ in, 19, in 1895 and it's been looked after subsequently by various people. Harrison's and Harrison came in in 2009 and chucked out everything uh, that everyone else had done to the Willis organ. So this is now Harrison and Willis. Um, and as we know, well, as, as you will know after I've told you, um, Henry Willis, uh, the great Henry father, Willis, was uh, very much inspired by Kavai Carl. Uh, so his reeds are very uh, French in character. If you go to somewhere like Truro Cathedral, uh, you can really see that in action, really fiery French reeds. Okay, so that's that as well. We'll have a look at the other departments in a while. So this hymn is for Ben, uh, Ben Parry, and it is Above the moon, earth rises a sunlight mossy stone. It's called Sally Gardens.
quite challenging actually being creative without the action of the choir division of having to use these three divisions here. It would have been very, very, very useful indeed to have had access to the choir division. Okay, where are we going next? We're going to um, one of my favorite hymns and then we'll have an organ piece. This is I Vow to Thee My Country, All Earthly Things Above. It is a request from Katie. Two verses of this, it's called Thaxted, and as you all know, it is from The Planets by Holst. You all know that, I don't need to tell you. So, I Vow to Thee My Country. Where shall we go for registration ideas? Let's go in um, with... Let me put that on number four, put the strings on number three. So let's just, let's just um, have a crescendo through this piece, shall we? Let's, let's explore this crescendo. So we'll start uh, as quietly as we can. So let's go on to the strings on both the swell and the um, uh, solo. So when you see me going down to the lower division, that's the choir and the solo coupled together. So as we are here in England on a very English organ, let's have a very English piece of music. You've heard me play this before a few times and I apologize for that, but I make no excuse because this is a wonderful piece of music. It's um, George Thalban Ball's Elegy and I love this piece. He asks for a cello quality um, solo stop. So why don't we have all of the eight foot stops on the great and the solo coupled together. Can't use the choir, 
So let's use the on this swell. We'll use the eight foot going up to the. Hmm, uh, let's not have. Let's just have the all the eight foot, shall we? And then the uh, pedal. We'll just have a fairly safe pedal part. Eight and sixteen foot. Okay. So I wonder what this will sound like. I hope this will sound. Um, I hope this will sound good to you. So George Falcon Balls, LAG.
with a rather noisy pedal note at the end. The wonderful thing about a pipe organ, which you don't necessarily get in Hamburg, is um, those rattles on those low notes with all the wood, the old woodwork, um, are rattling away. Hope that was okay for you. Um, such a wonderful piece. Every time I play that, I just think, wow, this is a really, really spectacular piece. Let's push on. Let's go on to, uh, back to NEH, and we're going to have um, a, one, of, one of the all-time great hymns, number 384, Jeez You Lover of My Soul. Wonderful tune, this in E minor, and it's a request from Kevin. Ooh, who, Caroline's put here. Uh, Kevin is recovering from knee surgery. So I do hope that uh, you are recovering speedily. I don't think you'll be moving anywhere speedily, will you? Because you're recovering. Actually, my mum has also uh, recently had work on her knee. So um, from a family perspective, I know what it's like. I hope you're okay. So Gigi Lover of My Soul, um, we'll have the tune Aberystwyth. It's not specified, but I think it's fairly obvious, isn't it? That everybody wants this tune. We'll have three verses of this wonderful hymn uh, for Kevin wishing him a speedy recovery for his knee.
And now I need to go up um, and fire up the iPad now because we have a PDF uh, with many pages. So let me find this um, arrangement of All People That On Earth Do Dwell by Vaughan Williams. Wonders of technology. There it is. Who has this been requested by then? This has been requested by Antino and Stephen, both of whom are patrons. Apologies for not calling out patrons. Uh, today, but I do know that Andantino, Stephen, and Kevin before that um, are all uh, patrons. So thank you very much, guys, for your support. So, well, this doesn't need any introduction at all. I've spoken about it many times. Um, and we have, it says here in the arrangement, all available trumpets. Well, that's a dangerous suggestion, isn't it? Particularly as we had a very, very naughty and fruity orchestral trumpet and a rather vulgar, exciting in a good way, uh, tuba. So, shall we have a bit of excitement at the beginning of this? All people that on earth do dwell.
I have to say that those reeds, the orchestral trumpet and the tuba are ecstatically loud uh, sitting here. And um, I just imagine the choir members sitting around me here in the choir stalls. When that trumpet and that tuba are being played, it really is quite an earful. Just quickly to mention actually the music of this wonderful church. There is indeed a choir. Hugo is doing very, very uh, good things with the, um, the choir here. He's really working it up. Uh, he wants to have more, um, uh, more recruitment. So there are more people, um, if you're wanting to sing in this choir and you are in the area, then do get in touch with Hugo. He wants to have more choristers. Very lucky him indeed to have such a, a supportive priest and the space here is really really pretty indeed the high altar is on my right hand side the nave is down there uh, choir stalls all around here and they use the high altar for the services they don't have a, a nave altar so the congregation will be walking through the choir stalls here it's really really pretty indeed so um, if you are in the area come and uh, check this place out it really is very special indeed. Sarancester was a very wealthy place um, years ago, and it historically has always been wealthy because um, Cotswold's wool um, in its heyday, as it were, um, was the finest in the world. So uh, the wool from this area was exported around the world, really. And there's also coal from uh, this area. So the combination of coal and wool uh, made this area particularly wealthy and a lot of that uh, money a lot of that wealth from people has been passed into this church so you can see all sorts of examples around the church of um, of wealth of people's uh, family wealth uh, wanting to leave their mark and it really is a very special church indeed for example the tower um, was paid for by a family I uh, can't remember which family it was now but the, they paid for the tower to be built so you know pocket money for some people to build a church tower. <laughs> so no wonder they have such a wonderful organ. Right, so where are we going next? We're going into the 1982. You know this hymn book extremely well, don't you? Number 558, it's already open. Faith of our fathers, living still in spite of dungeon, <laughs> fire and sword. Oh, how our hearts beat high with joy whenever we hear that glorious word. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Okay, so three verses of this um, wonderful tune and the wonderful hymn by uh, words are by Frederick Faber and the music is called Saint Catherine. And it's been requested by Jay. Jay is one of our patrons. So thank you very much, Jay, for your support. Faith of our fathers.
whilst we're in American sort of mode, it's been requested that I play uh, something by Paul Manns. Uh, and specifically, um, what God ordains is always good. So, and the reason I'm playing that after that particular hymn is, of course, Paul Manns um, was American. So this has been requested by Terry, who is another one of our patrons. So I'm very happy to play it indeed. What does he ask for? He asks for a cromorn. So that's a, yeah, a clarinet. So we've got one of those on the solo. We actually have two um, clarinets on the solo. And we have one on the choir and one on the solo. And in fact, before we have this piece, how, why don't we have a little bit of a tour of the solo division? So, the, so uh, the solo strings sound like this. A bit more stringy, if, if you know what I mean, than the swell ones. These are the swell strings. That's with the box wide open. And then the solo strings. Traditionally here in England, the swell strings are much more delicate than the solo strings. The solo strings uh, could almost be used as a solo stop, which is why they're a bit more fiery and lifelike. Uh, when we have some beautiful flutes, these are sort of wide flutes, big flutes. Almost like flute harmonique. Um, sort of style. A concert flute, so that was a, a, an old flute. This is a concert flute. With the, with the eight foot. And then a two foot uh, piccolo. Corno uh, di Bassetto, almost like a clarinet, but a bassoon. Cor anglais, 16 foot. Vox humana. And with a tremulant. And need I play the big reeds? Oh, I think I ought to, just once more then. So, orchestral trumpet. The tuba. So he asks for, in this, in this piece here, uh, Paul Manns asks for a cromorn, so we'll use the um, corno di bassetto on uh, that solo division there. He asks for an eight, four, and a nasard, and a one foot. Now we haven't quite got that on this organ, but we have got um, a clarabel flute on the great, a flute harmonic, four foot, and a twelve. So we're almost there, and he asks for, interestingly, asks for sixteen and four foot on the pedal. Well, there we go. Let's see what that sounds like, shall we?
It's rather disconcerting when sight reading a piece of music when you see um, a low A in the pedal part. <laughs> I think that's a misprint and it should be a low C, not a low A. I don't know many organs with a low A below middle, bottom C. <laughs> Terry, I hope that was okay for you. There was, was a little fluff towards the end there. I'm sure you'll forgive me. <laughs> okay, right. Where are we going to next? We are going to oh, one of the great hymns. Back into Common Praise. Um, it's over on this side, and it is How Shall I Sing That Majesty, which angels do admire, number 466. Now, who on earth has requested this? Um, well, looks like several people have requested it. Too many to mention by the sounds of it. Well, this, this really does um, give us an opportunity to explore these um, rich sounds, doesn't it? So where shall we start with this? Oh, come on, let's, let's imagine it's a full, a full church and let's, let's bring out the tuba, shall we? I know you'd be annoyed if I didn't use a tuba. So here we go. This is How Shall I Sing That Majesty to the tune Co Fan.
terrific stuff. Really, really terrific stuff indeed, isn't it? 505 now, we're gonna take the volume down. There's a few more hymns to go. Um, and it is Living Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you have come to us. You are one with us, Mary's son. Um, the melody is by Patrick Appleford and it's been arranged here by John Birch and it has been requested uh, by Julian, uh, the, Julian's wife who is recovering uh, from a bad fall. So I'm really sorry to hear that. So Sandra, I really hope that you are on the mend. So Sandra, I will, I will, um, I will bring out some of these solo stops on the choir, sorry, on the solo division for you. Um, let's start with the beautiful clarinet. It's a very, very nice stop indeed. Accompanied by uh, the eight and four flutes on the swell. And then we'll go from there. I have fond memories of playing that at Bristol Cathedral for some reason, um, and the it was a communion hymn, and um, there wasn't a motet. So there's normally a motet during communion, and we just had the hymn, so we had lots of time to uh, to fill. And in between each verse, I had to improvise. Uh, I don't think the choir were expecting that, but I did. I sort of waffled in between each in between each verse, and then had to find a way to get back into. Um, the next verse, so the choir wouldn't be caught out. It was actually a lot of fun. Let's go to 338 now, at the name of Jesus. 
every knee shall bow. Before we do that, let's have explore some of these um, stops on the grate now, shall we? So, lots of diapasons over here. Um, so diapasons are at the bottom, followed by the flutes, and then the, the 12th, the 15th mixtures, and then the big reeds. So let's start with the beautiful stopped diapason. It has a bit, a bit of a bigger brother, the Clarabelle flute. And the flute harmonique, it's that sort of style, isn't it? A very wide style. Um, with a forefoot, well, it's, a, it's called a, four, a, a flute harmonique forefoot, actually. Um, with the twelfth, which you've heard a few times today. And then the diapasons, we have two open diapasons here, which when brought together create a really rich, sonorous sound. The first one sounds like this. Second one sounds like this. And together they sound like this with the uh, sixteen foot as well. In the four foot uh, principle. With the fifteenth. Smaller mixture. foot and the other two flutes as well, eight foot, so this is what the full chorus sounds like. to the mix uh, the uh, reeds on the grate eight foot trumpet four sixteen. bell as well. <laughs> right, let's go on to uh, At the Name of Jesus. We'll omit one verse, we'll have, uh, well, so we'll, we'll omit two verses, we'll have, we'll have four verses of this uh, tune, it's called Evelyn's and it's been requested by, um, by Rev Jonathan. So here you go Father, At the Name of Jesus. Let's start with that really rich uh, diapason sound that we just explored a moment ago, both open diapasons and also the open diapason on the uh, swell with the, with the appropriate amount of bass in the pedal.
What's really wonderful about playing it on this terrific organ is this gives you guys and it gives me um, a bit of a, a, a flavor as to what virtual church will be like when we have the new organ. Because we will have four manuals, they will, the keyboards will feel and look very similar to this. Mine will be a bit heavier. Um, the keyboard racks here, um, I forget what they're, cheeks, they're called the keyboard cheeks, they will be similarly um, shaped, but more importantly, the stops will feel like this. And I will have physical stops for every single stop on the actual Hauptwerk organ. That will be a novelty. We will also have the black surround here, so the stops go into a black piece of wood here. Um, with the uh, division name on uh, above them. It's exactly as we're having on mine. Um, these pistons here are um, lovingly called in the, in the business um, of organ building, uh, golf tee thumb pistons, because they are pretty much exactly the same shape as a golf tee. They're really nice to press indeed. And also the wood, this is quite a dark wood um, and I've specifically asked for my organ, the Beauty and Sound organ, to be a similar colour to this. this. This desk is adjustable, goes in and out, which is exactly what ours will do. So actually what you see here will be very similar to what we'll have at home. Um, this has 62 speaking stops. I don't know whether that stops in total, maybe you can quickly count if you pause the video now. You can count how many stops there are, um, but ours ha has, has 130, uh, so ours will, will actually go a, a bit higher up on each side, but really, really exciting indeed. So what we're going to do now is have um, an organ piece um, followed by the voluntary. No, not an organ piece followed by the final hymn. I'm going to get ahead of myself. Now, the reason I said the voluntary is because we're going to have, um, we're going to have, before we get to the voluntary, two very English pieces. So the first is actually going to come from this um, very useful book here. It's an arrangement by Noel Rawsthorne of um, a London Derry Air. It's a really wonderful arrangement there. So we're going to have that now, and then and we're going to go into the final hymn, which I'll announce now. It is Jerusalem and did those feet in ancient time. So I think it'd be a really nice um, combination of these two pieces. Um, pretty much like, uh, this is obviously um, uh, an Irish tune. Isn't it an Irish tune? Oh, Danny Boy? I don't know, I'm not sure uh, London Derriere. No, London Derry is in Ireland. Perhaps London Derry air is an air for London Derry. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Um, so yes, I think this probably is going to be an Irish tune. Um, I know you're writing in the chat now. Of course it's Irish. Or of course it's not Irish. Don't be silly. Correct me. And then we're going to go into Jerusalem um, and did those feet in ancient time by Hubert Parry. So and then we'll go into the voluntary, which I'll tell you about in a minute. So two pieces, um, Noel Rawthorne, London Derriere, and then Jerusalem.
Well, that brings us to the end of the hymns today. Thank you guys for requesting such amazing hymns. We're just going to have a very short voluntary today. It is 20 past 11 at night, as you can probably, I don't know whether you can see the light um, or the lack of lights coming through the windows, but it's, it's quite late in the day. So I'm going to play a fairly short voluntary for you. It's going to be the Jigu Takata. I hope you won't mind. I think you quite like that. Um, and before we do that, I think we ought to just hear the pedal division um, before we say good night. So what have we got here on the pedal? Well, we've got the usual sort of uh, stuff. So a bass flute, eight foot. And a principal, eight foot. Which matches the open diapasons on the grate in terms of volume. A flute, four foot. Fifteenth, four foot. That goes nicely with the eight foot principle. And then sixteen feet, we have a borden. Um, a violone. An open diapason, metal. An open diapason, wood. And then a sub -borden. Very noisy. <laughs> uh, then a mixture which um, was, goes with the chorus. Um, pedal reeds, so we have a four foot clarion. Eight foot pizzown. Sixteen-foot trombone, a sixteen-foot ophicleide, and then a contra trombone. Right, let's now put that together uh, in this Takata by Eugene Jigu in B minor.
Well, there you have it. The Yuji Nijigu ending on full organ on this um, really very special organ indeed. Very exciting organ. Apologies for not being able to use the choir division. Let's just try it once more. So the mixture's popped out, even though I've pulled out the quietest dulciana stop. Oh well. Next time we come, hopefully it'll be working. I'm going to call it a night there. I really hope you've enjoyed uh, this weekend, the mini recital last night, and of course today's virtual church. It's been a busy evening for me, and it's also been a busy weekend. I've been conducting my Consort SW1 choir in Westminster Abbey. Uh, what an experience that will be. I'm obviously recording this prior to the occasion. I hope it went well. <laughs> Richard, let people know in the chat how it went. <laughs> Thank you very much to Hugo for um, allowing me to come here. Hugo Kennard, by the way, that is not my Hugo, it's another Hugo. Um, Director of Music at this wonderful church. It's a real privilege. So until next time, until next month, I think, um, we're very nearly in September now, aren't we? Gosh. Um, I will say a very fond cheerio. Goodbye, everyone. Take care and stay safe. Goodbye.